Yeah. So, and then we have Mr. Smith. Let's get down there. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna be. Okay. Questions. Uh, what two two men were sent out to spy a city? What was the city called? Sister. Jericho. Okay. And at Jericho, uh, the spies went into the home of whom? Sister T. The harlot. What's the name? Rahab. And um, how did she hide them from the king of Jericho? Sister Rose. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In heaven? <laughs> on the roof. What else did she do to them on the roof? Flat. Flat stones. Okay. One sister grand. We had you. Is she with you? Okay. Morning. To your Mr. Sister Grant. Oh, okay. I'm glad to have you. Okay. Huh? I'm Sister Grant. Your name is? Chris. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I always speak Spanish. So, so, you'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> and if you don't, we, you can just go right next <laughs> Okay. We're glad to have you. We're having to Sunday school right now. So, they met you yesterday? Oh, they met me like three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We're glad to have you. Go ahead, Mark and Bam. Uh, give the card to Sister Grant. Brother Christian's father, uh, grandfather's last door. Sister Fanny's father. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened to the family members of Rahab? Sister Merlin. What happened to them? If you read the whole chapter, you'll find out. They said that they would spare her life and her family's life if she, you know, didn't say that they were there. Okay. All right. They had to be where? In the house. In the house. Otherwise, they were dead meat. Okay. Um, I think that covers it. So, we're going to go to the thought. How many of you did your lesson? In other words, how many of you did not do your lesson? Thank you, Brother T. So what we do lesson? Good. Gonna make you be embarrassed. Yeah, she had to lower a scarlet uh, rope in the window. If that was not there, all the family was not in the house, there was no promise to be fulfilled. They had to fail the, uh, fulfill the requisites, which brings us to the thought of being a winner in the battle or otherwise victory. And that brings us to the thought that many times <clears throat> God gives us commandments and he gives us things that we have to follow. And we have to follow them down to the very letter. Otherwise, we don't get the victory. And this is where many people fail in their spiritual lives, is Rahab had things she had to do if her family and she was going to be saved. We're not going to go and read Joshua 2 because everybody did your lesson. You're supposed to already know it. But the thing is, is that she, God gave her a commandment. And he told her, you do this and this and this. Not God, Joshua did. But it was honored by God. Everything's what I It's a fire alarm. Uh, it was honored by God because Joshua spoke it. So when the wall fell, have you ever thought about how it looked? How many of you ever visualized the size ropes for me? <laughs> that the whole wall comes tumbling down except this one little piece. And that's where she had obeyed. She brought her family in and she put the rope out the window. And God saved her household. But the story of Rahab doesn't end there. 
because her obedience is carried through. What is the great thing that we find about Rahab? Those of you that did more studying um, or that remember, the great thing that we find about Rahab that is so important to us even today, brother, her faith, her faith but something else. Sister Rodas, she's in the lineage of Jesus, all because she did one thing, she obeyed. This to me is always a great challenge. When I read a people in the Bible like this, one little thing that they obeyed in, all the way doing everything to the, to the letter, their faith that that would be fulfilled, God fulfilled it, but God gave them greater things. And this is what is so good for us, is that when we obey God in the little things, and we keep going and going and going and walking by faith, even though sometimes we don't even understand, we do that. God opens bigger doors and bigger doors and bigger doors. And it is God's goodness with us, honoring our faith, but honoring our obedience. And today, this is what we find in the world we live in. Oh, I have faith, I have faith. Okay, people are saying that. But, but they're not having obedience. And that's what it takes. If things aren't working out for you, check your obedience before you check your faith. Check your obedience. Because God has laid out certain things for us in our life. And there are certain, we covered that last week, there are commandments that he has given us. There are, are and I won't say demands, but there are responsibilities that he's laid on individual shoulders. In other words, there may be things that God would require of Brother Daniel that he doesn't require of Sister Flora, but there may be things he requires of Brother Ignacio, and he requires it of Sister Rodis, but he didn't require it of Sister Nellie. But they're required because God has talked to them and revealed them. Now, if they do not obey those things, then the greater things, the victories, will not come. So when you come up against a wall and you say, well, what's wrong here? Why can't I get... Check your obedience. Check it. Think back when God last spoke to you. Think back when God revealed something to you and he wanted you to obey it. Have I done it? Have I done it like he said to do it? These are the things that we have to consider. Now, to have victory, we have to have faith. And to have victory, we have to have faith that is alive and active. Let's start there. Okay. Many times, people try, and even churches, try to live on the past blessings of God and not on the victories that he can give them. We cannot live in the past. We have to live today. And we have to, many times in, in uh, especially someone that served God for a long time, for a period of time, there are people we're just gonna have to bear. There are ideas that have to be buried. There are beliefs that have to be buried. There, ha there are, I would even say rituals that have to be buried that we have become accustomed to. If we really want to obtain the victories that God has for us ahead, we have to let go of certain things. And that's called active faith. Well, how do I bury people? And how do I let go of things? By faith, I'm gonna do it. Because God is saying, do it. And if I do it, I have victory. And Sister Sarota is smiling. And I know that in her life, there's a lot of people, they're still alive and walking and kicking. But she's had to bury him. She's had to bury him and said, I'm sorry, but there's a marker I see periodically that tells me you're buried because you're not going to interfere with the victories that I'm going to have. Because if I allow you to come alive, then you will ruin my active and alive faith. And this is where we go deep in the things of God, not the superficial. It's, it's wonderful, especially my young faces are gone this morning. But uh, for the younger adults, it's one thing when you start serving God and you have victories, but you can't live on that because God has greater things. What victories were there before? the fall of the wall of Jericho. There was no victories for the people of Israel? No, the, the two kings. Because, let's see, what else? The, the two kings. I don't kings. hear you, I'm sorry. Right. Huh? Okay, Brother Nasu? Okay, that was a victory right there. Okay, God had already given them great victories, but they could not rest on that. 
All right, think back in your own life. Think of a great victory you've had. And some of you are really think about it. That's sad. <laughs> but think back to a victory that you have had and how thrilled you were about it, how wonderful. But does it help you now in the one you're going through? You just know that it was a victory. Past victories encourage us, but they don't give us present victories. Huh? We draw from them, exactly. We, we, we get the good out of what was there. But we don't, we can't rest on that because every victory is entirely different. Every battle is different. When we understand that as young Christians and young adults, and even the older ones sometimes we forget, that, that victories in the past, we cannot live off of those and they're good. But every battle we face has something different. There's a different twist to it. And that's where we have to get the victory. And this is what God did for his people. Every time they confronted something, it was a little bit different. Okay, here they, they're looking at these great walls of Jericho, which we haven't even got where they fall. But they're going to face this great walls of Jericho. And they're going to have to remember. There's the twist. The God is going to take care of them in the battle, but the twist is this. That everybody in that little house that doesn't fall down, you better leave them alone. And that's the way it is in, in our, when we go out to fight our battles, is there are certain things that we can have a memory of, but we've got to remember that God is instructing us differently in every battle. Every battle is different. If we can remember that when we go out this week, it's going to help us to be able to conquer a lot of giants and to conquer a lot of territory. This is not what I fought last week. It's different. Think about it. Maybe it's somebody at work. Maybe it's somebody at school. Maybe it's somebody at home, uh, but it might be a different person in the same battle. That's where your twist comes in. If it's a different person, that's a different personality you're dealing with. You don't know how they're going to react. You don't know what they're going to say. So that gives you the need, I will say, that you need God to conquer every battle. Because only God knows the circumstances. And only God knows what's involved in that. So victory can be ours. And we can enjoy our past victories. But we cannot rest on them. We have to continue on. Now we want to turn to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 11, 39 through 40. Sister Floor, would you please read that loudly so everybody can hear it? 11, 39 through 40. Okay. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Read the game. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Okay. Our faith in Christ will give us present spiritual victory. These people in the Old Testament didn't have something that we have. And I told you over and over what it is. What is it, Alexandra? <laughs> and Okay, something more important than that. David, the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the blood. And I go back to what I go back and make emphasis so many times on this. We can never, ever raise the bar too high when it comes to the blood of Christ Jesus. Because that is what is our protection. That is what has saved well, we'll start at the bottom. That's what saved us. That's what gives us a victory. But when we call for the blood to cover us, even the Father sees that when we're facing our battles so that we can have the victories that we need. And the Holy Spirit, they didn't have the Holy Spirit either. They just uh, moved upon them. But to me, the most important thing when I read this scripture is, 
they they were promised good things and by faith they saw good things but they didn't have the blood and that is something that was given to our generation given to our dispensation that others didn't experience and if you stop and think about how important the blood is you'll cherish it you get depressed think about the blood Amen. Think about what it covers. Think about what it does for you. Amen. Because the blood, the, the blood of Christ Jesus is not just the washing away of our sins, but it is a living blood that is continuously working and covering us and protecting us and keeping us. And I don't want to use the word because it doesn't sound right, but it, it, it is continuously saving us from things because the blood is there but we don't claim it as much as we should. In other words, what we're doing, we're claiming Jesus and the power that he has over all things. Christ had dominion over all things on this earth. So why can I not call upon that blood to give me power to have dominion over all things and have victory? Mm -hmm. Joshua and Deborah, they conquered kingdoms. Um, and Nehemiah administered justice uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't have any problems in the fiery furnace and came out victorious. And Elijah, he escaped uh, Jezebel's, um, the guys that wanted to kill him. And Hezekiah, he uh, regained his health after being sick. And Gideon was powerful in a battle. And all these achievements were great actions of faith. But they're nothing compared to the victories that we can have through the blood of Christ Jesus. No. I, I just wanted to add something. Yeah, I know you're getting tickled all over. <laughs> I know Danny. <laughs> and it's in be, and I didn't I didn't want to say it before because it was kind of it, it would have maybe. To project your voice, they don't hear you I didn't say it before because I didn't want to stray from from the subject that you were going. But since you you covered the the part of the power of the blood, and I was thinking that in the lesson, um, when when they told Rahab to tie that cord in the window. It, it wasn't a coincidence that it was a red or scarlet cord and it was symbolic that that was what's what was going to save her and her family was that red cord not that the red cord had any power no. but it was symbolic that god was going to pass it was like passover part two yeah that he was going to pass over he was going to pass over that part of the wall Passover part two that's a good one <laughs> he was going to pass over that part of the wall and save her and her family you know and and i was just thinking that you know it, it's it's the power of the blood and it symbolically for her it was that red cord and for us what saves us is the blood of christ and without the death and the resurrection of jesus christ it would be powerful but because of that that and it's like you said uh, which i have thought of that before but i didn't think about it when i was studying the lesson this time but the 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 red or the symbol, the symbol of the red, as you said, Passover part two, <laughs> is the fact that even in the Old Testament, many ways God was revealing through the blood of different things. And that red, the crimson, what was going to happen for us. I don't understand why you can't get happy about it. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> you see? <laughs> That's why you were smiling so big. And you too, okay. <laughs> Good. Because the blood is very important to us. We can never, ever forget how important it is. Okay, if you don't think it's important, can I please have your veins and take out a little bit? No. No, you cherish it. Why? Because you know that what you have inside you is your life. You need that to stay alive. Well, I need the blood of Christ Jesus over me continuously to be able to stay alive and to stay full of the presence of God. And I visualize it still the same way. I cannot help myself. And I see the world with all, big old world, with all these little dots all over the place. And God looks down and he sees red dots. And that's those that are covered by the blood. That's why when he looks down and he sees blood, he doesn't necessarily see me. He sees a child of God. He sees someone that has accepted Jesus as their Savior that is covered by the blood. 
But there's a secret. We have to stay covered. Amen. How can we lose our covering, Sister Noreen? Our covering of the blood. Sin. Sin will blot it out. That's why we have to not work at it, but we have to make sure that sin does not enter into our lives. We go back to the very first thought that I said. I'm trying to get you to build your chain here. What did they tell you? Obedience. And obedience will break the chain. And the blood will like, it's, it's another miracle. Poof! It just disappears. Because of disobedience. It just disappears. Just like it's a miracle when we're washed with the blood and we're covered with it. Nobody sees it, but God sees it. Well, one, disobedience. That's why I can't emphasize to you, some of you that have been saved for a long time, one of disobedience, Poof, it's gone. Yes, sister. One of the things that I was impressed with that jumped out when she put on the board, she did it right away. She didn't know when they were coming back. They were just leaving. But if you read it, she did it right away. She put up that cord. She obeyed as soon as she heard what it was. She wanted to make sure she was right. And that's something that we need to do. We need to do it right away. We can't just wait. When the Lord gives something to us. And another thought about the blood of Christ is we torture ourselves. Because the, the, the blood of Jesus has power. And we don't claim it. But we are in our difficult moments. We shortchange ourselves. There's so much power there when we claim it, when we, when we proclaim it, when we tell the Lord that we are trusting in Him and we want Him to cover us. There's so much power there that comes with that. Exactly. That, that, that very thought makes me think of, it's almost like a wall that we throw out. And the enemy cannot touch us when the blood is there. The cord protected her, her. The protected us. Exactly. And, 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 and as I think about even the, the evil spirits or uh, the devilish spirits that may come even through people, but because the blood is covering me, it's a shield. And if we look at it that way, we can rejoice in it so much more. And then if you're like me, you will have a chain reaction here. You're going to be thinking about the blood, and then you're going to think about the death and his resurrection and his power and the Holy Spirit, and it's all going to come on you, and then, boy, you're going to get happy if, you're, if you really have experienced it. You can't help but do that. So why many times do we fail in our battles, or why are we crushed in our battles, even though we're making it through? And you know how much Alex and I both hate to hear those testimonies. I'm just, I'm hanging in there, saints, and I'm going to make it. No, I have the blood. Like I told you a few weeks ago, I am somebody. I am important because of the blood of Christ Jesus. And I cannot take it lightly for the tea. That way, brother. And give some more credit to Rahab. And what thought can it be that, as uh, the sister said, we touched that point, that uh, because she did not have to say, she obeyed. And uh, she did it right away. But the part that I'm looking at our show is that Rahab came out better than maybe all, maybe 90% better than the Hebrew. And why I'm saying because they saw the mighty works of God. They were Jews. Rahab was not Jew. She was a Canaanite. And she said to the spy that we have heard what your God has done. She had heard. But the Israelites didn't hear. They saw it. This is not my yeah. They saw it. And yet, they did not believe. And she said, we have heard what your God did. 
to the king, the two kings of the Amorites and the two kings and so forth. They were famous kings. And we have heard what your God and then I think he said that then I found out that your God is the God of what? Heaven and earth. And he became he just said in, in the lineage of Jesus which became our Savior and that true as we are coming down now true that true Christ now we are saved. But my point is, she believed, and because of her faith and her obedience, she made it to the top and became in the hall of faith of faith. Because of what? Of her faith and her obedience to God. <laughs> and that is a great challenge. She's, Brother T says she came out 90% better. I think she came out 110% better. 110 better. Because she, she just took my faith. And yet, how hard it is for us sometimes when we know what God's Word says. We've read it, we've seen it, we've seen victories in others. And yet, it is difficult at that moment to concentrate and accept by faith. What's wrong with us? There's something wrong. And it all goes back. Go back and follow yourself. This, this is where many times we need to check ourselves. Why am I not being blessed? Why am I not getting the victories I need? Why, am, why is this, this happening? Why do I feel this way? Why am I not rejoicing when I should be rejoicing? I don't feel good in my body, or I have a lot on my mind, but I don't even rejoice in my salvation. What is wrong with me? we got to go back and check ourselves, periodically. We need to know that if we have the faith, and we have put it into action, and we are covered by the blood, that's one of the things I told one of the young people, our, our young No Wrinkle Faces that are upstairs, I told them, um, one of the things you have to always remember when the devil wants to come and accuse you is if you know you have disobeyed and sin, God will pinpoint it to you. God will say, it's this, it's that. But it's not mass confusion in your mind. It's this and it's that. And that's what I love about God. God gives you details. He says this and this and this. And you remember that and you didn't obey. And you remember this that I taught, commanded and I gave you the desire and yet you didn't do it? then you missed out because you didn't follow what I was trying to instruct you. Many times that's the reason why we end up in the position that we're in and the condition that we're in is because it goes back to things in our lives. So obedience, they gave me five minutes, obedience and faith is what Rahab had and that's what we must have. So this week, one of your challenges is you go out and you think about this lesson, you think about Rahab is, am I obeying in everything I know I need to obey? And it's personal. It's not the ABCs of reading the Bible, praying, testifying, singing, blah, blah, blah. It's not that. It, it's deeper because God has revealed things to you that he has not revealed to me. There are things you know that I may not know or she doesn't know or he doesn't know. God knows us individually, and God has talked to us individually. That's what I love about God. It's so sweet about Him is that He comes and ministers to just me. And you don't get it. I got it. That's what I love about God. It's so intimate to me. And that's why I say, God, has, if you serve God, God talks to you. God reveals to you. God shows you. It's for your own good that he's asking you to do something. I go back to what I've told you many times. Children resent their parents. Why do they resent their parents? Because they tell them what to do. But a parent that really loves their children, they never tell them to do anything that's going to hurt them. They've told them everything that's good for them. And that's the way God is with us. Everything, I may not like it, I may not enjoy doing it, but when I do it, and I do it with a cheerful heart, 
God, you know what's best for me. And I don't like to do this. I don't want to do this this way. I want to do it my way. But you said do it this way. So do this way. When we finish, we feel good. <laughs> my mother. Uh, of course, y'all heard this story about my mother. My mother has this thing about the way she would clean, which I'm sure all mothers have. Because you're the same way and I'm the same way. It's a certain way you clean. And even though was, with many times as kids we would clean while she wasn't there, she'd say, how did you clean that? And if it wasn't clean like she had told us to clean it, and with what she had told us to clean it, we had to go back and do it again. And that's the same thing with God. God tells us how to do it. And if it's not done the right way, he'll come back and ask, I told you to do it this way, this way, and this way. Do it the right way, like I say do it, and it's going to come back. And usually that's the way it worked with mother. As a kid, I didn't understand it. I figured, you know, slop a rag over, get the dirt and the dust off, and I'm done. But she wanted more. She wanted it clean, waxed, so that it would stay that way. That's the way God is. The same way. He wants us to do it like he said. We do that. We have victories. All kinds of victories. All kinds of land we conquer. All kinds of people we can become. But we have to obey and have the faith. Brother Nelson. I was just thinking about Moses. That Moses, <laughs> Moses didn't get to go inside the promised land because he, he didn't do it the way God said to hit the rock. One other thing. One other thing. One other thing. He didn't get the big deal. He got part of it. And how many times have you ever wondered what am I missing that God had for me? I do. Is there anything that I'm missing that God had for me because I didn't obey at a certain point? I did it my way. And even though it was not sin, but I did it my way, maybe there's something there that God had bigger for me because I did it my way instead of doing it His way. I, thought, I think about those things. This is what's challenging. When you think about those kind of things in your life, then if you really, really think about it, then you are on the tippy toes and you obey God. And the more you obey Him, I don't know about you, but the more you obey God, the easier it is to obey Him. There are things that you don't think twice about doing as far as obedience. The more you do what He says, the more He, he gives you, the more responsibilities, and you fulfill those and fulfill those and fulfill those as more and more and more, and, the, and the, the, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger because God feels like you're responsible. He knows that you will obey Him even in the greater things once you have done the little bit. So as you study and as you think about it this week, as you meditate, as you drive, as you work, if I have faith and I am obedient, I'm covered by the blood, I'm going to conquer anything. That thought of depression, that thought of discouragement, that thought of I can't handle this, or I can't take this, I can go through it through God's help. Isn't that right, Jenny? That's the way it works. She's tried it. And that's when you put things in the right perspective, then it's not so overwhelming. It's not so big, the problem. But you got, the important thing is to remember, you got to keep the blood with you. And that's done through obedience.